Welcome to Grow Overload. I'm Anthony and AMD has announced the RX 7800 XT and the RX 7700 XT graphics cards here um, over the last couple days and I'm finally getting to it and <laughs> um, this is a very interesting launch. Uh, I think uh, I was a little I was very much worried that AMD was going to screw this up again and it looks like AMD has figured out at least part of it so far and I like I, if this all holds up with third-party reviews and everything else, I think I like that direction of what AMD is trying to do here. We, we'll see if they continue this or if it's just a you know fly-by-night. They just happen to get something right, right? Is this a pathway for the AMD is going to continue to go down, or is this just a shot in the dark and they finally hit one, right? Uh, we'll see where that's going. But let's jump over to their newsroom. Uh, of what they kind of put out here, which is this is the uh, this this is kind of replacing the last you know 6800 6800 XT 7700 7700 XT. So finally, that mid that those mid cards in their uh, lineup are finally here. You know they are targeting 1440 display resolutions. They are you know they want fully immersive. You know gameplay at 60 frames per second is what they want, right? and they want good performance per dollar right and that's where you know gamers kind of want to see these and you have 16 gigs and 12 gigs of gdr6 so let's see kind of the breakdown here uh you get you know 60 compute units versus 54 in the 7700 then you have 16 on the gigs of ram and then 12 gigs of ram on the 7700 so the 7800 you know is slightly specced up the, you have infinity cache and then on both 64 and 48 and then you also have 263 watts versus 245 watts. Now, the price on these is 499, which and then 449. So there's only a $50 difference between the two, which is very very close. Now, I thought these were going to be, uh, you know, this one was going to be well in like 550 or something, and I was going to be like, yep, yeah, this is just a pointless launch. Like, who cares? But AMD came in a lot lower than what I expected, which and I was thinking if AMD hit 499, this is a card to definitely consider if you're looking for a brand new card. Now, we still have to see how the rest of the market shakes out, how the um, previous gen cards are going to be priced against these, and then also where the performance is so we can kind of make a better assessment. And when I see some of those reviews come out, I'm going to make a better assessment on this. But if you're looking, if let's say you're looking between these two cards and you want to go up to 50 bucks, I think it's almost worth it at that point. I, I think this card should have been, uh, if AMD really wanted to hit it right, the 7800 was going to be 499. The 7700 XT, you put that at about 420, uh, 419, 4, 429, someplace in there. I think that would be a really good spot because then you have that, you know, dollar jump up of do I want to spend the extra amount of money to be able to jump up to you know the 7800 XT. However. This is what AMD did. They did a really good job, and I have to say, on that 7800 pricing, if their um, if their performance of what they say comes close to what the reviewers will, uh, if the reviewers confirm that, so that's really exciting. They also announced finally, you know, they said by you know the first half of the year they have FSR three information, and look, we finally get it now. But uh, just so you know, AMD, it's Q three, not Q, uh, not the first half. It is now in the second half. So they have Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3, FSR 3 is a frame rate generation leveraging AMD Fluid Motion Frame Technology and a game motion vector data dramatically improves frames per second. The uh, FSR is designed to, to provide massive performance boost and incredibly image quality in supported games across a wide range of products and platforms in com including competitors, product, and game consoles. Now, a lot of people, I think there's going to be a lot of people going both ways on this, that, hey, AMD should start locking down features. I think that this is a good way to start getting some of these other gamers on these other cars a taste of AMD software, of what AMD is capable of, of what their software is capable of doing. Um, let's say a car that's not supported, some, you know, these are... Let's say that the game has DLSS, DLSS 3, but your card doesn't play it. Let's say it's like a 2000 generation um, Radeon, uh, 2000 generation RTX. Whoa, 
Um, where's my brain there? Uh, they, they uh, brain fart. But they, if they can do that, uh, my point, of, my opinion is on this is that AMD is giving you an option to see what the game is capable of doing with FSR three. So maybe you might want to consider an AMD card next time that can help. That does a, such a well job on your, you know, non AMD product. I think that that's a good, you know, nice way of putting the software out there, saying, hey. Not only are we, you know, getting, you know, and they are working a lot better getting feature parity on all these, you know, added software items that NVIDIA has, but we are actually, you know, go back and support this on older cards, even cards that aren't our own, so that you get a taste of what the technology can do, so you can jump over and have a fully immersive thing with our card using our technologies all, all the way up and down the stack. So there is anti lake Plus that they announced, and there's what the Hyper RX technology, which simplifies and manages simultaneous interoperations of AMD Super Resolution RSR. Uh, Anti Leg Plus Radeon Boost technologies to achieve uh, performance stacking effect. Hyper RX includes a new AMD Radeon Anti Leg Plus technology for responsive gaming. It's you know more on that. But what was really good is that AMD got this Hyper RX, so now you can flip a switch. And it can turn on the features that are supported and everything else. And you get this, you don't have, uh, and by the way, just so you know, HyperRx and Radeon anti lake su supports Radeon RX 7000 G series GPUs. So you got some exclusivity there. But what I like about this is this is a one-click operation to kind of turn on all the features that are supported that you can, anti lake Radeon Boost, all that stuff. So you have all this radiant technology that they've put in, they've put the effort in, is can just be turned on with one click rather than you going through and trying to understand what everything is. And then you can, mod if you want to jump in and modify, you still can, but at least it's one click turn on. So these cards will be available in September, on, well, September 6th. They'll be available on September 6th. You'll be able to get your hands on it. Happens to be that's the same day that you're going to get uh, Starfield. So if you're looking for a new graphics card and you want to get and you want Starfield, this may not be a bad option, right? You get the Starfield uh, key plus you get the graphics card. That's something to keep in mind as well. I think I hopefully reviews are out by the sixth, so you can go and order one or get one there. I think that would be a really really um, good option if the reviews hold up. Uh, I always have to preface if the reviews hold up now. Uh, I, I'm mentioning FSR, but uh, if you watch some of my other videos, you know I'm not a huge fan of all this other technology. I like my quality in games. I like the image quality. So I will have to see kind of what it is and how the image quality will, um, will be on these games before I can really make a good assessment to see how it competes with DLSS 3. I'm, I'm also not a huge fan of inserting more frames. Um, just to insert more frames, I, I like to, you know, make sure that your graphics, I, graphics card is stacked up and performing at the right pace. You know, I kind of see this. I did an AI video, and I kind of see maybe the next step in software isn't so much of this technology on this graphics card. It's making sure that AI can really help and assist in making sure the scheduling of the graphics card so they're getting the frames out in time and really addressing maybe some of the peaks when something hits the graphics card to get, the, to get that, you know, through the pipeline, you know, at a better stage so that you don't have these, you know, peaks and valleys as much in there. But getting back to AMD with FSR, right, you got two games coming out with FSR. I believe Cyberpunk is going to also get, a, um, get this as well. So just something to keep in mind, and um, the Cyberpunk expansion pack will have it, right? I don't know when that's coming out. I, I don't. But let's go over the 7800. They, here's what they kind of said for some of the frame rates at 1440p. Uh, they said max settings, whatever that is. Uh, by the way, they even have ray tracing on some of these games, and it's doing quite well. Um, AMD also kind of compared this a little bit to on some of their slides, but I'm just ignoring those because I, I want to see what you know third-party reviewers kind of you know see, and uh, see, hopefully there's no mistakes right in those videos, and we can get a good assessment of what that is. Uh, you know, there, you know, a lot of these reviewers do a really good job. So 
th it's very interesting to uh, kind of see all kind of what they say the frameworks are going to be, and then you also have uh, this so Call of Duty, 127 to 106. You can kind of see you're taking a little bit of hit there uh, on all these across the board, right? You guys can go back and forth here to see kind of the difference in frame rates and just pause it and you can go um, on that side of things. But uh, closing remarks here on this, I think AMD really kind of did hit the 7800 um, just from what I've seen so far. Hopefully that the reviews aren't <laughs> saying, oh, this is a horrible card, don't get it, right? If that's the case, I, I will retract everything I just said. But for pricing to where performance should line up, I think AMD did a really good job finally with a price here. And, um, you know, I was listening to Morris Law is Dead, and he said stock is about equal for both these cards, which, you know, looking at these prices, I thought, okay, AMD probably doesn't have a ton of stock of the 7700, but um, what he what he said is probably, you know, I take it face value, uh, you know, if that is true, then why did AMD price this one so close to the 7800? You know, that's a that's just something I like to kind of figure out, right? You got the boost clock a little bit different between the two, the 7700 is a little bit faster, okay. But, uh, you know, the, they kind of seem to, you know, hit this a little bit with the price-wise, which kind of makes this more of an attractive card. I thought they were just going to price this so far out of the market, put it at, you know, 550 and be like, eh, go last gen. But uh, they didn't, and this is making it interesting. And then as, you know, FSR3 stuff hits out and be compared to DLSS, I'll have some opinions on that as well but uh, until then let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below are you excited for these cars is this something that you might consider getting um, for 500 bucks we'll see I, I, I don't know I'll spend I guess still got a 6700 XT in here uh, in my main machine but you never know um, but with that I want to thank you so much for watching thank you for taking the time to help support gravel and helping this channel grow I really do appreciate it until next time God bless and don't feel like share and subscribe